This video is an introduction and explanation of the 2025-2026 Science Olympiad Boomilever rules specifically for Division C. I will only be discussing the design part of the rules, so please make sure you read and study the official rules to understand all aspects of the event before any competitions. If you have competed in any of the Balsa Build events before or watched some of my previous videos, you know that the basics of this event don't change and are primarily dictated by the testing apparatus shown here. The general goal is to create the highest efficiency device, which just means the amount of mass it holds divided by the device mass. Historically, the event has two year cycles between building bridges, towers, and boom relievers. For bridges and towers, the testing apparatus is configured like shown on the left, with a flat surface to test the device. For boomies, it's configured with a vertical testing wall as shown on the right. For all the devices, the loading is done by hanging an empty bucket from a chain using S-hooks attached to a 5 by 5 centimeter block which sits on the device. Then sand is added to the bucket, either with an auto-loading system like shown here or by hand. Each year, the rules are changed slightly by modifying specific design requirements and by changing the competition scoring to have students explore various trade-offs. Before going into the specific rules for this year, I will show the general setup and process to make the basics as clear as possible. Once you complete your build, it gets weighed like shown here. This particular build weighs 7.842 grams. Here you can see the boomy setup and is ready to be tested. Don't worry about the testing wall or other aspects of the rules just yet. I will talk about those more in detail in a bit. The key takeaway is that the boomy is attached to the wall on the left, the 5 centimeter loading block is on the device, and the bucket is hanging ready to be loaded with sand. The really fun part of this event is the testing process and seeing how much your device holds. I'll save the video of the testing for future videos, but for now know that once the device breaks or holds the entire weight, the bucket, sand, and all the dead weight including the loading block and chain are weighed on a scale like shown here. For this particular test, it held 13,198 grams and weighed 7.842 grams, so its actual efficiency is 1683.0. Now that we understand the basics of this event, let's talk about the specifics of the rules this year. You might have already noticed that the testing wall I just showed was not the same as the one I showed in an earlier picture. In the recent previous cycles of Boomilever, the attachment at the wall used a J-hook, this year, it's a bolt with a circular end. This is an example of the type of changes that happen year to year to keep things interesting. Here is an end view of the testing wall for this year. The first thing you'll notice is that there are a bunch of lines drawn on it. This is what you'll see during competitions, as there are lines for both Division B and C. To keep things as simple as possible, I will only describe the parts that are necessary for Division C. If you are making one of these testing walls for yourself or to host a competition, please take extra care to make it as precise as possible. Here is a side view of the attachment bolt. As you can imagine, this bolt is extremely critical. The exact dimensions and type can be found in the official rules. The good news is that it's a common bolt and can be easily found at local hardware stores or purchased online. Once you have the bolt attached through the testing wall, the dimension that matters is from the surface of the wall to the inside edge of the end of the bolt. The rules state that that dimension should be 30 millimeters plus or minus one millimeter. It's not too hard to get it pretty much exactly 30 millimeters, so take some time to get it as close as possible. Next up are the vertical lines on either side of the bolt. These are drawn at exactly four centimeters from the center line of the bolt. There is no tolerance specified in the rules, so make sure these are drawn as accurately as possible. I found for all these lines, it was easiest to draw them before the bolt was installed or the wall was mounted. Once the bolt hole is drilled, you can very accurately measure from the center line of the hole as a reference for all the lines. The horizontal lines are drawn at distances of 10, 15, and 20 centimeters from the center line of the bolt hole. For Division C, we are only concerned with the vertical two lines and the top two horizontal lines. The boomy must only touch the wall outside the two vertical lines. For a non-bonus design, the boomy must touch the wall between the 10 and 15 centimeter lines. And for a bonus design, it must touch the wall above the 10 centimeter line. For example, if you wanted to attempt a non-bonus build, which means your score will just be the boomy's actual efficiency, it can only touch the wall in this highlighted zone. 
I have highlighted a big area here, but in reality, you'll want it to be as close to the bottom line as possible. If you want to attempt a bonus build, the boomy needs to be shorter and needs to be completely above the 10 centimeter line. Another bonus requirement is that it needs to hold the entire 15 kilograms. If you can accomplish both of those tasks, you get an additional 5 kilograms added to your mass held. Here are two pictures of Division C boomies. The one on the left is a non-bonus design, and the one on the right is attempting the bonus. I'll talk much more about which one I think is better in future videos, but for now, this is just to show the differences. Another critical design requirement for both versions is that the center line of the loading block chain needs to be within 40 and 45 centimeters from the testing wall. That is the green tape marking I have on my testing rig. You will find that you'll want that dimension to be as close to 40 centimeters as possible. I will talk more about that and other design specifics in future videos. That covers the basics of the design requirements for this year's Division C Boomy event. Please let me know if you have any specific questions, but your best source for clarification is the official rules themselves. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to read them thoroughly. Ideally, each member of the team should know them well enough to be an event supervisor. Knowing the rules completely gives you confidence and the ability to double check and potentially question any issues you might encounter during competition. Thanks for watching and good luck this season. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos.